Hallelujah. We have a little uh, audio problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, yes, don't we? Yes, yes. We can't be God doing anything. Amen. Especially when it comes to giving. Amen. Yeah. Well, we're going to bless the Lord today yes, yes, yes. because we are blessed. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the loving kindness the tender mercies, which are new yeah. every day. Every day. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Father, for this day. This day is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad yeah. in it. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your divine presence in this house today, Lord. Thank you for your word that is already settled in heaven. And thank you for the great and mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We magnify that name. We give you glory and we give you honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's hold them up. Right. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my word of God. This is my word of God. It's the living word of God. It's the living word of God. It brings life to me. It brings life to me. I am what it says that I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. And I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. My life is better. My life is better. So much better. So much better. After having heard, after having heard, spoken, spoken, and practiced, and practiced this word of God, this word of God says Satan, Satan, you are defeated. You are defeated. Get under my feet. Get under my feet. We have the victory. We have the victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know that was a song we used to sing back was Victory is mine. Yes. yes. And victories is all of ours. But today I just wanted to share a little bit about receiving the promises of God. I guess my title is Faith, our connector to the promises of God. Right. You know, over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 12. It says, let me get there. Then I won't leave you behind. <laughs> Sound in verse 10, it says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the poor assurance of hope until, until the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you do not become slothful or lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Through faith and patience. Faith and patience goes together when it comes to the promises of God. Amen. Receiving the promises of God. Amen. I'm trying to get my peoples together here. Even though my lens fell out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's okay. I got one good one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It 
said through faith and patience. We need patience. But we also need faith. Your, your faith works by love. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many ingredients that is in use when we begin to walk by faith. And we have to make sure we got all our ingredients when we begin to believe God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 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 Sometimes we can have faith, but we don't have patience. Mm -hmm. Or you might have patience and you don't have faith. Amen? Yeah. And then you might have faith and patience. Then you might not know how to walk in love. All right. You got to, you got to watch your love walk. Yes, yes, yes. Because the Bible says faith works by love. Amen. Amen. We thank God that he has given us instruction how to apply his word. Yes. Over in Deuteronomy chapter 8. In verse 1. It said, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your father. Now remember what it said here about the word, the commandments of God. He said, you must be careful to observe that you may first, he said, you may live. We need the word of God first to live back. And it said also, and multiply. Amen. God had commanded us to multiply. Yes. Go in and possess the land. Yes. And he also said, may go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your father. Yes. That's the good land. Yes. That's, the, that's the type of life uh, that Jesus has purchased for us on the cross. Yes. They are, we call it the abundant life. Yes. We go in and uh, we got to possess it. Even though it's been given, we still have to possess it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it said, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to humble and fed you with manner which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now God has given us some, some instructions. These are life instructions for our whole life. Uh, we don't live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but we live by the word. Yes. Every word. Right. Not some of the words that proceeds out of his mouth. He said, but every word. Yes. And the scripture said, uh, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Yes. He said, and it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Yes. So that the man of God will be thoroughly fruitful. Uh, furnished for every good work. God wants you equipped. Yes, yes. So he had given you every word. Every word that received out of his mouth belongs to you yes. and belongs to me. Yes. And it is important for us to understand what these words are that proceed out of the mouth of God. We call them promises. Great and precious promises. Amen. Over in our first Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, it talks about uh, the past tense of what God have already done. He said in verse three, Blessed be the Father and God, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has past tense. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now I'm gonna go over to 1 Peter. Now 1 Peter 10, 2 Peter chapter 1. In verse 2, it says, 
Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power have given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. That which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises and through these you may be partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. You know, this sounds like God has set a buffet table before us, right? Yeah. Anybody ever seen a buffet on a cruise ship? Yeah. Yeah. On those buffets, they got everything that you can imagine. And they got all kinds of food, desserts, meats, you name it, they got it. But not only do they have it, they have it in abundance. Yes. And most of the time, it's 24 hours a day. Yes. You can walk down to that buffet table and get anything Hallelujah. you want. Amen. 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 But how many have been to a buffet? Yeah. Do anyone serve you at a buffet? No, you got to learn how to, you have to serve yourself. God has set these promises before you, and now he expects, and he tells you, help yourself. Amen, tell the glory. Help yourself to all that he has put before us. And he has put it before us in an abundance. Yes, yes, he has. So when God, sometimes when God gives us a promise, he expects us to do something. That's right. So what's on the table do you want? Being he said he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Is peace on the table? Then go get you a servant of peace. All you have to do is receive it. Go get it. How many need healing? If you need healing, learn how to serve yourself. Go to the table of God and yeah, yeah. take a servant of healing. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's already been given to you. God has already laid it before us. If we're going to go to another level of faith, we're going to have to learn how to walk by faith. Yeah. If we, we're going to have to come to a place where we can't, they don't expect somebody to serve us. We shouldn't be going and ask people pray for me. We should pass that level Come of faith. Come Come, we should grow past yes, that yes, in faith yes. where we know how to go to God for ourselves and get yes. it for ourselves. Take part, take of what God has given you. Yes. Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need some joy. I never need some joy sometimes. You can go to the table of God and take the joy that God has given you. And all of a sudden you'll find yourself getting strong again because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Yes, indeed. God expects us to do something. Sometimes when faith rides up in us, we believe that we can do the impossible. Yes. Because that's what we should be doing. Yes. Doing the impossible. Right. Because the Bible said, to him that believes, nothing is impossible. Right. So there should be some impossible situation in our life that we are taking care of ourselves. Because God has already taken care of it for you. Yes. Yes. And all you got to do is partake of it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Take what God has given you, apply it to your life, because the Lord has said in the word, the just shall live by faith. Yes. He said it four times that the just shall live by faith. Yes. That right to God, faith is very important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
And if faith is important to God, it should be important to you. Yeah. You know, the whole Bible consists of faith. In Romans 10, 8, it called the word of faith, which we preach. Yeah. The word of faith. Every word that was seen out of the mouth of God is a faith-filled word. Yeah. And that word will work for you if you will take that same word and place it in your mouth yeah. and yeah. release it by your faith yeah. and speak to the mountains. Speak to your situation. Speak to your circumstances. You know, you've got mountains in your life, but the mountains are not moving because you're not speaking. Come on. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to go up the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You got to learn how to speak to that mountain and tell that mountain to move. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> so, our life is wrapped up in this word. Yeah. God has written our life out. Yeah. Our whole life is written out. Yeah. Yeah. All the promises of God have been given unto you. Yeah. Yeah. And each promise belongs to you yeah. as a child of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God has already given it to you. <laughs> Let's repeat these words that God said, God said, I believe. I believe. God said, God said, I receive. I receive. God said, God said, and He will make it good. And He will make it he good. He said He hastened His word to perform. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. God wants to work a miracle in your life. Yes. But to God, that's the norm. Yes. Yes. To us, we call them miracles. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But God wants us to walk in miracle signs yes. and wonders. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. But we won't see miracle signs and wonders until we begin to stretch forth our hands. Yes. 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 We begin to lay our hands. Yes. We begin to speak to the situation, yes. speak to the circumstances. You won't see the miracle happen if you don't do something. Yes. God expects you to do something. Mm. God, in the word, the Lord said, I have given them, Jesus said, I have given them thy word. And they have received. Well, how many received the word of God? Amen. If you have received the word of God, then you have the word of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And the word of God belongs to you. Yeah, yeah. And as you begin to walk in this word, because the word of God is final authority. Yes, there yeah. is no higher authority. Yeah. In God's word right. and his name. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that word belongs to us. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The just shall live by faith. Yeah. Yeah. One, of the, one of the greatest statements that I've heard in the scriptures is that uh, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that simple? Yeah. Have faith in God. Mark 11, 23, 22. He said, have faith in God. He said, so in verse 22, 22 he said, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Now, Jesus said this because Jesus had done something. Amen. They had saw something. And they saw what had happened. It, in verse 20, it said, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Yeah. One translation said, have the God kind of faith. Yeah. Yeah. But here, God wants us to put our faith in him because God is bigger than any circumstance. Yeah. He's bigger than any situation. Yeah. He's bigger than any problem yeah. that you can yeah. see or yeah. that you yeah. cannot see. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
So have faith in God. He said, for surely I say unto you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and pass into the sea, and does not doubt, doubt in his heart. But believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, what's the therefore there for? The therefore is because therefore. <laughs> therefore, I said to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Have faith in God. God is a faith God. Everything God did, he did it by faith. Amen. When in the book of Genesis, Jesus began talking and things began happening. That should be the way in our life. We should begin talking and things should begin, begin to obey us. Maybe we are not talking to the situation. Maybe we are just talking about the situation. Nothing happened talking about anything. If you want your situation, your circumstances to change, start talking to it. Yeah. All right. All right. They got ears. They hear. Yeah. They can hear. Yeah. They tree her. Yeah. <laughs> the mountains can hear too. That's right. Yeah. All right. Because nothing is hid in the sight of the word of God. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful. Yeah. And yeah. sharper than any two edged sword. Amen. So God had given us something so powerful that he backs it up. When you speak a word, God backs up yeah. his word. Yeah. Amen. Yes, he does. You know, I don't know if this ever happened to any of you. You know, sometimes we have loved ones in our family. And uh, because we have gotten a hold of the word of God, we believe that we can raise the dead. I didn't believe that. Hallelujah. But you won't raise the dead until you act. That's right. That's right. We can talk about raising the dead, but some, when the time comes to act, we become so full of death, mm -hmm. so full of fear, yeah, and the devil is filling your ears with what if? Yeah, yeah, what, if? <laughs> what if nothing happens? Yeah. But what if something new happens? Yes. Faith will override all the doubt and unbelief and fear. So if you have faith, you're going to go beyond that. Yes. And you're going to focus on the one who made the promise. Yes. 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 Tell it. Focus on the one who made the promise. You know, that on the table too, you know. Yes. That's on that buffalo yes. table. Yes. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Jesus spoke to the dead. He spoke to Elijah and he said, come forth. Yeah. 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 We can never take God, can't we? Yes, yes, yes. yes. But sometimes our faith are so little. We need to increase our faith. And how do we increase it? By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. We all have faith because God, Romans said God has given each of us a measure of faith. And if you have faith, then you have enough. You have enough. You have to use that mustard seed that God has given you. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we need to practice our faith. Before we can believe God for something big, maybe we need to just believe God for something small yeah. Yeah. and work your way up. That's right. That's Each right. time you see how God moves in your life, your yeah. faith grows. Yeah. Yeah. Your faith becomes stronger. And God wants us to be people strong in faith, giving glory to God. Just like our father Abraham. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And we got to come to a place 
We want to move to a higher level, but we got to do something. You want to walk in a higher level of faith? Start walking in the faith that you already have. Start using what you already have. We want to be someone who can move mountain, mountains. I don't know about you, but I have a few mountains. I've been talking to them. They've been listening. Yes. They're listening. Yes. And they are beginning to move. Yes. 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 But it's through faith and patience. Yes. I can be patient. Yes. Yes. But the mountain will move. They have no choice. Right. Come on. If you think not, if you give, don't give up and faint and lose hope. Yes. Yes. Tell it. You got to know how to stand, and after you have done all, keep on standing right. yes. and keep yes. on pounding, yes. keep on speaking, and keep on yes. doing what you know you need to do. Yes. God is a great God. Hallelujah. Yes. Over in Matthew chapter 17. And in verse 20. Let me go back up a little bit. Starting in uh, verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And Jesus said, Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear you with you? Bring him here to me. Now, I don't think Jesus said it that way. I really believe he was kind of disappointed yeah. in the disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Because this was a review. Yeah. He said, how long I got to put up with y'all? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't think Jesus talked like that, would you? <laughs> but Jesus had a human side too, you know. And Jesus said, and Jesus rebuked the demon, and they came out of him, and the child was cured from this very hour. And the disciple came privately and said, why could we not cast him out? So Jesus answered and said, because of your unbelief. For surely I say unto you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible unto you. Amen. Now, we know that we got faith. Our faith was given to us as a seed. But if you plant the seed, you have the seed will grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no longer it will just be a seed. You'll be, you have an abundance of faith. Yeah. You have the faith to move mountains. Yeah. And, and not only will the demon obey you, anything else will obey you. Yeah. Your situation will obey you. That's right. That lack in your life will obey yes. you. Yes. Poverty will leave your home. Yes. Yes. Got to be. Mm. How many of that was spoke to a house? Yes. I remember me and my wife early. We were looking for a house that was years ago. And we saw a house and we liked the house. But when we called the relative, he said a contract was already on the house. And he said, and I don't think, uh, and, and he pretty sure that this contract was going through because it was a mili military contract. And I told my wife, I said, well, okay, uh, 
Oh, let's take an agreement. Let's bind up the contract. <laughs> we took a thought on the contract and he could not close on the house until we decided to release it. And once we released it, they closed on the house. We made a decision that that wasn't exactly the one we wanted. <laughs> Amen. So we released it. And when you bind up a contract or something like that, don't forget to release it if you don't want it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you don't want to walk right, walk away because of the great power that you had exercised yeah, yeah. in the power of agreement. Yeah. There is so much power that God has given us. Yeah, yeah. And all of this is on the table. Yeah. On that big buffet table that God has set before us, which says that all things, He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we thank God. Sometimes uh, faith involves risk. You know, uh, sometimes you can uh, step out on faith. You believe that. Uh, you're receiving a word from the Lord. And sometimes you might go and you think you receive a word from the Lord and the word that you gave was rejected. So sometimes it will cause you to look foolish. You may look very stupid sometimes. But the fact is, you took a step of faith. Amen. So if you lay hand on a sick person, and that sick person don't recover. What do you do? What do you do? Anybody ever did that? I have been lay hands on a sick person and they actually die. Amen. But that's not just me. I know many people who have did that. But that don't mean we didn't walk by faith. That was a faith action that we did based on the word of God. The word of God says we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If they don't recover in this life, they will recover in the next life. Amen. Because God's word will not return to him more. Amen. So you got to trust God in the midst of your disappointments. Whatever it is. Never stop trusting God. Because faith pleases God. Open uh, Hebrews 11, 6. It tells us but without faith it's impossible to please him. Let's go to verse 5. It says, that faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. But before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now we know that the next verse tells us how he pleased God by his faith. We please God when we step out in faith. Yes. God don't take pleasure in those who draw back. If you know God has said it, and you said you believe it, you said you receive it, now take it and go with it. Use what you have received. And God will back you up. Amen. We are we have to come to a place where we know how to walk on water. You can walk on the impossible when you walk in that faith. You can do the impossible when you walk by faith. Nothing is impossible unto him that believes because nothing is impossible unto our God. And our faith has to be focused not on the situation, not on the circumstance, not on the need, not on the lack. Your faith has to be focused on the one who made the promise. Yes, yes. Amen. 
Now, God is the one who made the promise. And God is the one who said he will make it good. Yeah. That he watches over his word. Yeah. That he hastens his word to perform it. Yeah. Now, no word of God can return to him more. Yeah. So if God said it, yeah. I believe it, yeah. I receive yeah. it, and that settles it. That's right. And this should be all of our attitude. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. God said it, believe it. Yeah. And receive it. And then act on it. We serve a God that is he awesome. You know, we praise God for many reasons, but sometimes I just praise him because he's so awesome. And he can do what we, above what we can ask, above what we can think. And God is, can do that for us and he can do it for us with ease. Amen. And God does not uh, blink at how big a problem is. You can't ask for anything too big for God. Because everything resists within him. Amen. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. If you want to please God, you will have to walk by faith. You just can't say, I have faith. You will have to have an act of faith. Yeah. A faith which is alive. Yeah. A faith that willing to take a step yeah. to move mountains. Amen. Yeah. With those faith, it's impossible to please God, and he that comes to God must believe that he is. Yeah. You know, a lot of people believe God even exists. The devil believes God exists. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. When I was a sinner, I believe God exists, but there was no reverence, respect, or honor that I gave him because I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. But after I established the relationship with him, everything changed. Amen. Now I walk with a reverence toward God, a respect and an honor that belongs to him. Amen. And I won't do what I used to do. I don't go what I used Come to on. go. I don't even say the things Come I used on. to say. Nor do I act the way I used to act. Right. Amen. Yeah. Because yeah. everything changed. Yeah. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Yeah. All yeah. things have passed away, and behold, yeah. all things have become new. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. some yeah. people ain't gonna like you for it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Amen. Right. Some people, uh, they're gonna talk about you. You know, on my job, they got to a place that wouldn't ask me, wouldn't invite me to their parties. <laughs> you think, I mean, I, I appreciate them coming and tell me. He said, I didn't think you were coming, no way. <laughs> I said, uh, I sure appreciate that. I said, no, you're right, I won't come. <laughs> because I knew the guys I worked with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I thank God that they saw the change. Right. You know, we sang the song, Oh, what a change in my life. Yeah. A change should be so present in your life that it can be seen by yes. those who have known you before. Yes, right. amen. Your life has changed. Oh, thank you, Lord. And your desires have changed. Yeah. The thing you have to, you used to run after, you don't run after no more. Amen. And we just thank God, because some of us are running behind junk. Yes, yes, <laughs> Amen. Yes, indeed. And sometimes we court things yes. that we didn't want to get. So you have to learn that God always has our best interest yes, at hand. He loved us so much. He didn't want to let us stay in the place where we were. Amen. 
He wanted to give us a new life. Yeah. And that's what we have, a new life. Yeah. I just don't want to turn a new page. I need a new yeah. life. Amen. Yeah. He, he, if he didn't give me a new page, that would mess that one up too. Yeah. Amen. But the thing about it, he gave us a new life. A new life in Christ. Yeah. And that's something to boast about. Yeah. When people talk to you, be quick to tell them, hey, who you are. Yeah. Right. I'm a child of God. Yeah. Right. I'm a child of God. We don't deny him in the, in the face of uh, the unsaved. We speak up. We speak boldly. We let the world know who we are. Jesus wasn't ashamed of us, was he? So we definitely is not ashamed of him. And he has given us the word and we told us to keep the word in your mouth and keep the word in your heart because the word that you have is life unto you and it helps to your flesh. Yeah. So you need life, keep the word in your mouth. You need help, keep the word in your mouth. Yeah. All of this is on that table, that buffet table that God has set before us. And you can go and take what you need. Amen. Pastor has been talking to us about operating in a higher level of faith. And that's where we're going. We're going to a higher level. And we are moving on up, as the song used to say. And I remember Fred Price, his theme song was Evidence. Does your life show enough evidence? Yeah. Your life should have some evidence of who you are. Yeah. And that evidence is to be seen not just by you, but by others. Yeah. He said, let your light so shine before men and make glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you allow your light shine, God get glorified. Amen. Yeah. You know, we thank you. We thank God for Abraham, the father of our faith, because we can learn something from him. Over in Romans chapter uh, four. Romans chapter four. Romans chapter 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Starting in verse 17. I'm in Luke 4. <laughs> Good thing I didn't start reading, huh? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, even God, who give life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who contrary to hope, in hope, believe, so that he might become the father of many nations, according to what was spoken so shall your descendant or your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old or the deadness of several wounds. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened or strong in faith, giving glory to God. And this is why, being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Now, this was written not just for him, but it was written for us also. That what God has promised, we need to be fully convinced that if God said it, he'll make it good. Yeah. If God said it, it's mine, yeah. it's yours for the taking. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. Yeah. He, when he said all things, that means all things. That's right. And we just thank God that because of what he has given us, we can walk in victory. Yes. We can walk in the abundant life. Yes. 
Faith never wait to see before it's believed. Come on. If you got to wait to see before you believe, then that's not faith. You are just another doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. Doubting Thomas said, unless I see the nail prints in his hand and the, 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 the face in his side, he said, I will not believe. But he was saying that as an act of his will, he won't believe. You can, you can exercise your will to believe, or you can will not to believe. Yeah. You might say, I will not believe. That's the act of your will. Yeah. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah. You can choose to believe, or you can choose not to believe. Mm -hmm. And choosing not to believe is not faith. You choose to see. You want to see first. Mm, come on. I believe it when I see it. Anybody ever said that? Oh, yeah. We don't say that no more, do we? Yeah. No, we don't say that no more. We said, I believe it. God said it. That settles it. Amen. Amen. So we can we can begin to walk in that God type of faith. That's what God wants us to do. Walk in his type of faith. Walk in a manner that pleases him. Not leaning to your own understanding in these things. But you're, you're putting your trust and your confidence in him or in the promises of God. And the statement of some of Psalm 1 called, Standing on the promises of God, I cannot fail. So if you are standing on the promise of God, neither can you fail. After you have done all, stand some more. That's right. The word will hold you up. The word, the word will hold you up. And it will not let you fail. Uh, God's word is the basis for our faith. If you have no word, you have no faith. No faith, no word. No word, no faith. So faith is the basis of our word. The word is not you. It's in your mouth and is in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Faith has to do only with the word of God. Jesus said, I have given them thy word and they have received them. Thy word is the sole reason for your expectations. You expect God to bless you because you have his word on it. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Then he said, yeah. that's the blessing that belongs to you. The promise of giving belongs to you. Yeah. He said, it will be given unto you. And if you, if you, come, if you go on, it's honor God to believe his word over all symptoms. Yeah. When we make, we make the symptoms bigger than our God, mm. it dishonors him. So if you want God to honor you, you honor him by not focusing on what is wrong or what is hurting or what is you don't have or whatever that need is. You have to learn how to focus on the God who made you the promise. Yeah, yeah. And you must know the promise. If God has made you a promise to bless every place and so that you'll be tread, then you should begin to thank God that you are blessed. Yes. Yes. And wherever you go and whatever you do, you. faith is very important unto God. And takes God takes joy in seeing you grow. God is the object of your faith. Yes. Yes. He's the object of your faith. Amen. Amen. Have faith in what? In God. The object is more important than the size of your faith. You don't have a little bit of faith, but God is greater than your faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So God is the object of your faith. Amen. Faith is show in, 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 uh, involved in enduring to the end. As we endure hardships, we endure all kinds of things that come through us. We are walking by faith. 
And we enjoy whatever comes at us. Yes. And we're not moved by what we feel so much. Right. Most of the time we ask somebody, we talk to people, we ask them how they feel. We're talking to the natural side of the person. Yes. So you may not be feeling good if you say, I'm feeling great. You may be telling a lie, you don't feel great because you're keen to that flesh side. But how are you doing? You can say, I'm doing good. In the middle of a problem, situation, circumstances, whatever it is, because you are in Christ, you're doing good. You have the greater one on the inside yes, of you. Yes, Amen. Man. And you're walking on the water that you, which is the impossible. Amen. Amen. We just thank God that he has given us our word. Yes. And we have received his word. Yes. And his word has become life unto us. Yes. It has become our help. Yes. It has become our joy. Yes. It has become everything that we need. Amen. It's the word of God that we speak. Amen. Amen. Well, we just thank God for this opportunity that we have had to um, receive words to increase us more and more. God takes pleasure in, in the prosperity of his people. He wants you to prosper. Yes. He wants you to be in heaven, yes. even as your soul prospers. Yes. So as we come to the conclusion of this sermon, we just thank God that the word is settled. The word is still in heaven. Yeah. It's not going to change because we change. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change because we don't receive it. Mm -hmm. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Amen. That's how it is. Father, again, we give you glory and honor. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for the great might of the Holy Spirit, his leading, his guiding. Yeah. Thank you, Father, that you have uh, increased us in the wisdom of God. We have taken your word. We have taken your promises off the table. They are no longer on the table. They are ours. And we begin to partake of the blessing. And we thank you, Father, uh, for each and every one on the sound of our voice this day, Lord. And if anyone here have a need in their life, physical need, whatever need, you may have in prayer. Feel free to come forward and we'll pray for you and we'll pray with you. In Jesus' name, amen.